What's going on you guys, this is Aaron from the Partridge Capital and welcome to the video. In this video, we're talking all about the overall markets as these are your market minutes. We're talking about gold and silver as we're seeing a flat day on Wall Street. The tech rally continues for some stocks. We're also going to be talking a little bit about Tesla as they're down today on a $5 billion capital raise along with one new and exciting company that we're bringing to you guys in the natural health food sector. Now we brought you guys a company like Else Nutrition. This company is in the health food sector, although they are focused on food products like vegetarian meat. So a little bit different, but a very exciting niche sector. And we all know what happened with Beyond Meat, so we will be dropping an interview with their CEO later this week on the second. So I've got a lot of stuff for you guys. It's a very exciting time for Departures Capital. And that brings us to the last thing I wanna see before we dive into this market recap. Eclipse Mining just put out some news, so check out the company, if you haven't had a chance already, we've got three videos on the channel. Simply just search Departures Capital Eclipse Gold Mining. And you will see that the phase two drilling has begun at the Hercules project in Nevada. So Eclipse Gold Mining is a gold explorer in Nevada, and they just started drilling at their phase two drill project. So it's an exciting time for the company. We will have more news updates and interviews for you guys as this whole project unfolds. So anyways guys, let's dive into the video. And the last thing I'm going to say is if you do support me the channel and all the updates that we put out, then don't forget to, of course, kindly explode that like button along with if you are a new viewer to the channel you haven't had a chance to subscribe yet we appreciate constant daily updates in the markets a steady flow of new and exciting companies and you might want to learn more about investing then don't forget to catch that subscribe button and hit the market bell for notifications and let's get straight into this video guys so it's nice to say that i finally have wi-fi back up it's been the second outage and i'm very very Annoying messes up my schedule and that's why yesterday's video was late, but we're right back on track. So let's get straight into comment of the day. So first comment goes to TRP. AA Ron, you pointed out that the highs are lower on AU, but missed that lows are higher. Also, that's a bullish wedge triangle and it's basically just broke out. So we are going to take a look at the silver charts and thank you for pointing that out. And I did miss that. So I appreciate your technical analysis, guys. If you do want to drop those comments below, let me know what you think, what the technicals when it comes to a specific chart, especially if I've talked about it. I don't claim to be a technical trader. I claim to more so be a long-term buy and hold investor. That's the way I like to do things. I used to trade a little bit. Now I'd say I take a more passive approach and just put the money in, let it run, and um, hope for the best, and then adjust accordingly, obviously. Next comment day goes to Jessica Mack. Tesla, 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 Tesla. Loving it, Aaron. Yes, I might soon catch you to that gold price. LOL. So if you're in Tesla, holy smokes, guys, it has been a wild ride, a wild ride of gains. So congratulations to all of my Tesla longs. I said $1,000 was crazy, and now we're well over 2000 after the split. And um, it's pretty amazing. We will be looking at the charts for Tesla and for Apple. Those are two tech stocks that I want to talk about in this video. But um, just a couple more comments. So next comment day goes to Ed Hedges. Where is your microphone in your back pocket? And I got a few comments saying that the mic was a little bit quieter. So I bumped up the volume, kind of adjusted it, put it a little bit closer to me. So let me know how the sound is on this one. May sound a like kid. The volume in the last few videos has been extremely low. Sounds like you're in the bathroom. And then last but not least, we've got two more comments. Raj Wat hey Aaron, thanks for your videos. Please check out AZM. Cat's up 7%. So Good to see Tat performing pretty well. And then check out GRSL from Brian Stewart, huge potential. So thanks for all the comments, guys. I really appreciate your comments. Drop those below. Let me know what your thoughts are on the markets. Specifically today, I would like to know, I feel like it was kind of a relaxed trading day, although tech is on the move. So before we get into this video, the last thing I wanted to say was I wanted to give you guys an update on our private group, which is 10 bucks a month or 100 bucks a year. And we will be posting all of our September content, which includes a in-depth report on one specific topic that um, I will be releasing sometime this week, along with our private videos, an update on our portfolio and any new trades that we've made. So if you're interested in that, check out the group and let's get into the rest of the market recap. So in terms of the S&P 500 NASDAQ and the Dow. The NASDAQ is up another 1.28% with the Dow and the S&P up another half a percent. So this market melt up continues. And I also want to pull up the charts for the NASDAQ. So we're going to compare that with Apple after we do gold and silver. So gold is in fact down $6 today, although holding very steadily. Happy to see this for gold. Gold is looking a lot more strong over the past couple trading sessions holding on to those gains. But like I said, I do want to see gold get back above 2000 bucks per ounce, preferably over 2020, but we'll see if we can in fact get there for now. 
just watching it. And at least for the gold chart too, we have made higher lows, which is in fact pretty important. So now let's take a look at the charts for silver as um, I missed those higher lows. So guys, I see what he's saying here. We are in fact making higher lows. And, um, and if I'm painting this picture correctly, which uh, I'm not too sure that I am, but uh, let's just continue to draw it. If that was the wedge, then I guess we did just break out and um, we did in fact make higher highs over this last little rally. So fingers crossed silver is looking more bullish than gold right now. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if we get over 30 bucks per ounce in the very near future for silver. So that is my short term target. I've become a lot more bullish on silver over the past little while just by looking at the charts. This is simply technically driven for me, at least over the short term. But I do think that those long term fundamentals will continue to carry the metal. So we're going to talk to you guys today a little bit about some news for some tech stocks. I wanted to talk specifically about Tesla. Tesla announced a $5 billion capital raise and I'm surprised they didn't raise money earlier. It's pretty amazing that they didn't make any big moves despite the massive run up in the stock. If this was an MJ company, you would have seen all sorts of things happening if any of these MJ stocks ran even half as far as Tesla did. Just my personal opinion. Tesla today announced a $5 billion capital raise to take advantage of the stock price's meteoric rise. While Tesla CEO Elon Musk previously said that the company wasn't interested in a new capital raise as it believed it was capable to finance its ambitious growth through its operations, it looks like they couldn't resist the following stock price increase. Tesla's stock price has risen 500% and the stock is now trading close to $470 billion. So the company, you know, I lost track in the 200s and now Tesla's worth almost half a trillion dollars. So do you guys think that this valuation is justified? In this day and age, it's, it's really hard to say with all of this money flowing around. I mean, let's just look at the stock price. We compare Tesla to Apple. If we look at the entire history of Apple, I mean, Apple was trading less than a dollar for such a long time and now it's trading for $133, $134. If you look when Tesla first started, it traded for a couple years, around four, five, six bucks. Then it traded in the 40s to 50s and now we're at $475. So I'm just wondering if we will look back on history and say, wow, these valuations were insane. I'm wondering if, you know, we're going to look back. But then I'm also wondering, you know, taking a look at the charts here, let's go back a couple years and see what the 2000s dot com bubble looks like. So personally, what I think, guys, so it took us 20 years to get here from the 2000s. So I think, you know, Tesla could, in fact, keep running. Who knows how far it's going to go? But I do think that we will pull back. Now, I'm just simply basing this on history. And then we'll probably trade sideways, consolidate for a little bit. I do think Tesla will be higher than what it is today, definitely down the road, if they do execute on all of their plans. And if they do, in fact, become, you know, the dominant factor in the world's electric car production because they're going to get a whole ton of competition. Now you guys can argue with that, but it's just bound to happen. That doesn't mean Tesla won't still dominate, but um, it's a tough call right now. I'm not going to be jumping on the Tesla or Apple or the tech train. And, you know, I could have said this before this whole global illness hit the markets that I thought it was overvalued and I did. And I still think it's overvalued today, but um, tech investors are making a killing right now. What can I say? And this environment just compounds things. But these factors are also good for gold and silver. And I do think that, you know, at least for a short term next couple, two to three year trade, I think that gold and silver will be more sustainable. We'll see how long the tech rally lasts. It could, in fact, just keep on running. But um, I've just always been a long term gold and silver bull and I will stick with that. I'll stick with my defensive strategy, especially when it comes to gold and silver miners in the portfolio, along with those dividend payers, those utility companies. But you can consider me old school and um, I will dabble with certain interesting tech companies like the one company that we have coming up for you guys, which is an interview with the very good food co's CEO. So stay tuned for that. Now, a couple quick articles on gold and silver and a few things from CNBC, then we'll be into all the charts and then that will be it for the video. Gold and silver prices are a bit firmer in mid to US trading and off their earlier highs. However, both metals are still in a strong technical position on the charts. The precious metals are being lifted in part 
by a wilting US dollar index that today hit another two year low. October gold futures were last up $3. December comics futures were last up 13 cents to 28.72. That brings us to the next chart. Like I said, guys, watch the US dollar and the US dollar has in fact rebounded a bit today. We were down there at 91.80 ish. Now we're back up to 92.37 and running. So that could be another reason why in fact the metals have reversed a few of those gains. One of the last articles guys I want to talk quickly about some price targets. Here he calls $2,200 gold and $35 silver by year end. So in a report Tuesday one precious metal firm said it continues to see more upside potential for gold and silver. Analysts at Curious Precious Metals said that the C gold price is pushing above 2200 an ounce by the end of the year. They updated their year end target, which represents an 11% gain from current prices. December gold futures last traded at 1982 an ounce. A combination of low to negative government bond yields and unprecedented fiscal and monetary stimulus has driven safe haven demand in the year to date. The macroeconomic and geopolitical landscape is expected to remain supportive for gold for the rest of the year. So those long-term factors that aren't just gonna, you know, disappear. Silver's time to shine as precious metals get a boost from the weak US dollar. Senior commodity economics at BNP Paribas reiterated his stance earlier in the month that he expects silver prices to outperform gold, which he said is now in a consolidation phase. So another analyst, more bullish on silver. And then just a couple quick headlines, the charts, and then that's it for the video, guys. So the Fed could be locked into zero rates for five years or even longer. Short-term interest rates are expected to remain anchored around zero as the Fed fights to get inflation higher. Powell laid out the strategy last week when he spoke of an enhanced approach to inflation and a revised philosophy on employment. So there we go on interest rates. And the last thing, and it's just a headline, the US dollar will trend weaker on the Fed's new strategy. So another strategist, BNY Mellon's strategist, John Vales to be exact, thinks that the US dollar will continue to trend lower, which is another supportive factor for gold. So we're just picking through the news. We're just finding you know, some interesting pieces of data and um, a lot of analysts still remain bullish on gold and silver. So that is encouraging. Now, let's dive into the charts real quick and then that will be it for the video, guys. So, in terms of the MJ sector, let's see what's going on. We are seeing Body and Mind up 26%, followed by Delta 9 and Oxley in the green, up another 9%. Sundial Growers, FSD, and Ianthus, three biggest losers. ACB is down another 5.5% to $12.17 and 17 cents Canadian, as the stock trades dangerously close to under a dollar now Canadian, well under a dollar American. So ACB's earnings just around the corner. We will have to keep you guys updated when it comes to that. Now, in terms of the dividend sector, Canadian Utilities, Brookfield, and Algonquin, three biggest gainers, Extended Care, Bank of Nova Scotia, and Bank of Montreal, three biggest losers on the day. Now, in terms of the gold stocks, let's see what's going on. It's a mixed day. Overall, we are seeing more red than we are seeing green. Termaline is up 6.25%. First Majestic, B2, and Alamos, three biggest losers on the day. Now, in terms of tech stocks, we are seeing... Apple, Alibaba, and Tencent, three biggest gainers. Tesla is down 4.3% on that $5 billion capital raise. And um, where's MindMed? MindMed manages to stay flat to in the green. So hopefully, guys, we can get some gains from MindMed. And last but not least, we are seeing of the broader 2020 watch list, tons of 52-week highs for the tech sector, Amazon, Alphabet, Lululemon, Apple, JD.com, all up 3 to 5%. And Tesla did hit a 52-week high today before dropping almost 5%. So, guys, that's it for the video. Thanks so much for watching. Drop those comments below. Let me know what you think. This is your daily recap, and we're out of here. Always remember, Departures Capital is for information, education, and entertainment purposes only. Don't buy or sell a stock because you heard it on here. Buy or sell a stock because you've done your research, you've done your thorough due diligence, and you make your own personal investment decisions for yourself. This video is not financial advice. We'll see you guys in our next video.